Hey guys, today we're diving into the ultimate guide on scraping unlimited viral LinkedIn posts. Whether you're looking to boost your social selling game, find trending content, or just flex your automation skills, this video has got you covered. We're going to break down every step so you know exactly how to scrape those posts and start getting results immediately. Are you ready to become a LinkedIn scraping ninja? Let's get started. So first of all, thank you for coming back and a big welcome to all of the new subscribers joining us today. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Jake Dawson, and I'm here to bring you the latest in AI sales, automation, and workflow hacks in a way that's easy to understand and apply. And as always, everything we cover here today is meant to help you succeed. These are not just theories, but strategies you can use right now. Now, if you're new or you want more automation goodies, make sure to check out the school community linked below. We have tons of exclusive make.com templates. And yes, the one we're using today is ready to import and start using. All right, let's jump right in. So why should you scrape viral LinkedIn posts? First, it helps you see what's trending in your industry. The internet moves fast and knowing what content your audience loves means you can create posts that hit the mark. Whether it's polls, stories, or quick insights, you'll know what works. Second, it's a social selling superpower. Sharing the right content builds trusts, starts conversation, and positions you as someone who gets it. You're not just another salesperson, you're one with valuable insights that matter. All right, let's get our Google Sheet ready for action. Open up Google Drive, create a new sheet, and call it LinkedIn Posts. Keep it simple. No need to name it something wild like Super Mega Viral Scraper 3000. We're here to work, not build a spaceship. Okay, now in the sheet, let's set up two columns. One's called Profiles and the other's called Profile URL. The Profiles column is where we're going to add LinkedIn usernames. If you're not sure what that means, it's the part of the LinkedIn URL that comes right after the in bit. For example, if the URL is linkedin.com slash in slash John Doe, the username is just John Doe. So how do you find these usernames? Easy, head over to LinkedIn and start looking for profiles in your niche. If you're in sales, search for sales influencers, industry experts, or people who constantly pop up in your feed with posts that get lots of likes and comments. You know, the ones that either make people cheer or start a comment war. Why? Because engagement, even if it's heated, it means people are paying attention. Scroll through profiles and pick out the heavy hitters, the guys who get reactions, shares, and comments like it's their full-time job. Copy their username and drop them into the profiles column. Get at least three to start with. Think of this as like making a playlist of all of the chart topping hits, but instead of music, we're collecting content gold. The more profiles you add, the better your scraping results will be. Now, let's move to the profile URL column. This is where we'll generate clickable links that take you straight to each person's recent posts. We're going to use a little formula magic for this. Don't worry, you don't need to be a spreadsheet wizard to pull this off. Type this formula into the first row of the profile URL column. Let me break it down for you. The first part, linkedin.com slash in, is the base LinkedIn URL. The A2 refers to the cell with the username you just added. And recent slash activity slash all tells LinkedIn to show us that person's most recent posts. Hit enter and boom, there's your full profile URL ready to go. Now don't stop there. Click and drag the formula down to fill the rest of the rows out. It'll automatically generate URLs for all the usernames on your list. It's like giving your Google Sheet a little caffeine boost. At this point, you've got a list of profiles and URLs that point directly to their latest posts. But we're not done yet. Before we can scrape anything, we need to make sure Web Scraper can access the sheet. So let's publish it. Go to File, Share, Publish to the Web, and click Publish, and grab the link. This step is crucial. It's like unlocking the door to the scraper so it can do its job. If you skip it, the scraper will be left outside knocking and nobody wants that. Next, let's get the Web Scraper extension installed and ready to roll. Open up Google Chrome and head over to the Chrome Web Store. If you're not sure how to get there, just type Chrome Web Store into Google. It's faster than trying to remember the exact URL. Now in the Chrome Web Store, look for the search bar on the top left and type in Web Scraper. 
hit enter, and let the magic happen. You'll see a bunch of options pop up, but we want the one that's literally called Web Scraper. It should have a light blue icon. You can't miss it. When you see it, click on the Add to Chrome button. A pop-up will show up asking if you're sure you want to add it. This is the moment of commitment, folks. Go ahead and click Add Extension. Once it's installed, you should see the Web Scraper icon appear in the top right corner of your browser. If you don't see it, don't panic. It's probably playing hide and seek. Click on the little puzzle piece icon. It's the one that holds all of your hidden extensions and find Web Scraper in that list. Click the pin icon to make it stick to the toolbar. Now it's out in the open, right where we want it. To double check everything's working, click on the Web Scraper icon. This should open the Web Scraper dashboard. If you see a new window with options to create a site map and manage scraping tasks, congrats. You've officially joined the scraping club. If it doesn't work, try turning it off and on again to give Chrome a quick restart. You know, the classic IT move. Now, we'll need to tell Web Scraper exactly what data to collect, and this is where the selectors come in. Think of selectors like giving instructions to a very eager robot that just wants to follow orders perfectly. The robot needs to know, hey, what exactly do you want me to grab here? And selectors are how you do that. We're going to break this down step by step, so don't worry if this sounds like techie mumbo jumbo. You've got this. So first up, we're going to create a link selector to capture all the LinkedIn profile URLs in your Google Sheet. Open up the Web Scraper interface and click that shiny Add New Selector button. A little form will pop up. For the name, let's keep it simple and call it Link. Naming your selector something easy to remember is a lifesaver later on when you're knee-deep in scraping tasks. Then for the type, choose Link from the dropdown. This tells the scraper, yo, we're looking for clickable URLs here, nothing else. Next, click the Select button. Your screen is going to switch over to the Google Sheet and you'll see your mouse turn into a little crosshair, like a digital sniper. You're going to aim for the profile URLs in the profile URL column. Click on the first link and Web Scraper should highlight it in a glowing box. If it doesn't highlight, just click a little slower. Sometimes the Web Scraper needs a second to wake up. Now here's the critical step. Make sure you check the multiple box. This is like telling the robot, don't just stop at one link, buddy. Grab all of them. If you forget to check this, Web Scraper will only grab the first link it sees and ignore the rest like a picky eater. After checking multiple, click Done Selecting. Then hit Save. And just like that, you've got your link selector ready to roll. Next, let's set up some additional selectors to get the real goodies from LinkedIn. We're talking post authors, post text, dates, and likes. After all, the URLs are just the beginning. Go back to the Web Scraper interface and click Add New Selector again. For the name, we'll call this one Name because we're grabbing the names of the people who posted. For the type, pick Text. This tells Web Scraper we're looking for words, not links or images. Click Select again, and now you're going to the LinkedIn Post page. Hover over the names of the authors on the posts. These names are usually right above the post content. Click on the first name you see, it should highlight in a box. If you're seeing the whole post get selected instead of just the name, zoom in a bit and click carefully just on the text. Once the name is selected, check the multiple box again. We want to grab all the names, not just one. Click Done Selecting and then Save. Boom. You've just set up the name selector. All right, now let's grab the post text. Same drill. Click Add New Selector, name it Post Text and set the type to text. Click select and hover over the body of the LinkedIn post. This is where the actual content or story is. Click it to highlight again. Check the multiple box to make sure we're collecting all the posts. Click done selecting and save. Next up, let's capture the dates. These are usually small timestamps near the top or the bottom of each post. Click add new selector, name it date, and set the type to text. Click select and hover over the date on the post, highlight it, check multiple again, click done selecting and save it. You're getting the hang of it now. Okay, finally, we need to grab those precious likes because let's face it, everyone wants to know what's getting the love. Add a new selector, call it likes, set the type to text, 
click select and highlight the number of likes on the post. Don't worry if it says 23 likes or 1000 likes, Web Scraper will grab the numbers just fine. Check multiple, click done selecting and save it. At this point, you've got all your selectors lined up like ducks in a row, link, name, post text, date, and likes. Before you run the scraper, give everything a once over. Make sure each selector is marked with multiple and is grabbing the right stuff. If something looks off, better to fix it now than later. Now you're ready to scrape. Head back over to the sitemap overview, take a deep breath and click scrape. Let the web scraper do its thing while you sip your coffee or do a victory dance. The scraper is going to visit each profile URL, dig into the post and collect all the juicy data that you just set up. When it's done, go back to browse and bask in the glory of your freshly scraped LinkedIn data. Now let's get that data into Google Sheets. First, click on export data in the web scraper interface and choose CSV. A CSV file is just a fancy way of saying spreadsheet ready file. Don't let the acronym intimidate you. Download that file to your computer. It'll usually land in your downloads folder unless your computer has its own ideas about where files should go. Next, open up Google Drive, click on new, then file upload, find that CSV file you just downloaded and upload it. Once the upload is done, right click on the file and select open with Google Sheets. And just like that, Bam, your scraped LinkedIn data is sitting in a nice editable spreadsheet, all organized and ready for action. Names, post texts, dates, likes, everything you need to start analyzing what's trending. Now this is where things get exciting. Having all this data at your fingertips means you can start making sense of it right away. You can sort the posts by number of likes to figure out what's going viral, filter by dates to see the freshest trends, or scan through the text to spot themes that keep popping up. It's like having a cheat sheet for content creation and that's social selling. Let's say you want to find the most viral posts. Select all the data, then click the little funnel icon in the toolbar to create filters. Head over to the likes column, click the filter arrow and sort it from highest to lowest. The posts with the most likes will shoot straight to the top. These are the winners, the posts that people can't stop engaging with, pure gold for your social selling strategy. Want to get even more specific? Filter the posts by date to see what's trending right now. This way, you're always on top of the latest buzz. Maybe everyone's talking about a new sales technique or a hot marketing trend. Knowing this lets you jump in on those conversations while they're still fresh, making you look like the person who's always in the know. And here's the beauty of it. This isn't just about copying what's popular. It's about learning what works so you can craft your own content that hits those same engagement triggers. You're getting insights into the types of posts your audience loves, the kind of language that grabs their attention and the topics that keep them hooked. It's like reverse engineering success. The best part, you can use this data to boost your social selling game, share the right posts, start relevant conversations, and position yourself as someone who gets what your audience cares about. It's not just about posting for the sake of posting, it's strategic, it's smart, and it builds trust. And let's face it, trust is what turns connections into leads and leads into sales. So there you have it. You've just learned how to scrape unlimited viral LinkedIn posts. And now you've got a killer tool in your back pocket to find out what's trending, boost your social selling game, and level up your content strategy. If this helped you out, do me a favor, smash that like button, subscribe for more automation hacks, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. Trust me, you don't want to miss out on what's coming up next. If you've got any questions, ideas, or if there's some specific automation you want me to tackle, drop it in the comments below. I genuinely love hearing from you guys. Whether it's something that tripped you up in the scraping process, a creative way you're using these automations, or even just to say, hey, this worked for me. Let's keep the conversation going. And here's a pro tip. If you want to dive deeper into this kind of stuff, don't forget to check out the school community link below. Inside, you'll get exclusive make.com templates, including the exact one we're using in today's video. This way, you can skip the setup hassle and get straight to scraping. It's a space where you can ask questions, get help directly from me and other automation nerds, and connect with people who are just as pumped about this as you are. Think of it like your backstage pass to automation hacks. All right, everyone, 
That's a wrap for today. I'm Jake, your friendly automation guide, and I'll catch you in the next video.